What's up, dude? You know those crazy viral YouTube videos with millions and millions of views? It's always just a pair of hands, peaceful music, and weird clickbait titles. Today, we're gonna put one of these recipes to the test and see if it's worth the hype in my new series. We'll see about that. And as always, there is no time to waste. Now, let's go. Today's recipe is coming from the channel Schneller Koch. That's the name of the channel. I'm assuming Koch just means cook, right? Schnell, fast. I don't know, I don't speak German, but I'm saying fast cook. That's my best guess, fast cook. And the video is titled, It's So Delicious That I Cook It Almost Every Day, Chicken Leg Dinner in a Pan. Thumbnail looks tasty to me, let's have a look at this. And as always, I'm watching this video for the first time so we can get an authentic reaction. Those are some huge chicken thighs, wow. Or she's really small, I don't know. Starting with oregano and pepper, I'm not sure how I feel about putting dried oregano right onto the chicken like that. It feels like if these get seared in a pan, the oregano's gonna burn right away, but I don't know, we'll see. There's a lot of potato in those peels, you know what I'm saying? Baby carrots. She's starting off with that olive oil butter combination, which I happen to love. Olive oil and butter are just two of the best, right? And they taste so good together. Careful of your fingers, careful of your fingers. Tuck them in. Dicing up some onion, cubing up some potatoes. Once your chicken thighs have gotten nice and golden brown, give them a flip. To me, it feels like those should have gone a little bit longer, but that's all right. It's not the end of the world. This is the way to cook though. Sear the meat in the pan, take it out, and then throw your vegetables into that same pan because it's got the olive oil, the butter, and now the chicken fat. Triple threat of flavor. Now she's simply mincing up some garlic along with some parsley. Whoa, we're taking a little bit of a wild turn here. We've got a pan with some honey some sweet chili sauce, some soy sauce, some lemon juice, and some Dijon mustard. That's like a whole bunch of cultures just met up and just said, let's just make one sauce out of everything we got, man. But I'm not against it. I bet you that's gonna be good. It is a bit, a little bit strange, but I don't know. I bet you it tastes good. Garlic and parsley goes into the vegetables once they're fork tender. Chicken thighs go back on top of the vegetables. And then the sauce is going all over the chicken. There's one thing I can tell you for sure right now is that this dish has a lot of flavor. Just based on that sauce alone, it's gonna be interesting to see. And you can see when this chicken comes out of the oven, it's definitely not too thick. Everything's sort of evened out in there. And honestly looks delicious, and I really can't wait to try that sauce especially. But is it worth the hype? Is it worth 13 million views? We'll see about that. And as always, at the end of the video, we'll give this a rating. And if it's really good, we're gonna go outside and we're gonna turn my fridge into a burning pile of scrap metal. Starting with the prescribed five chicken thighs, I'm gonna drop some dry oregano on them. Honestly, this is something I would never, ever do, but I won't judge it so early. I wanna see what happens, right? For me, putting dry spices on something I'm gonna sear is not really a good idea because my fear is that these spices will burn, but we'll see. I just gotta talk about what I'm thinking, you know? This is how we all learn. So, oregano, oregano, oregano. Salt goes without saying. You always wanna season from up high like this so you get even distribution. And now a little bit of Sergeant Gilbert, who is uh, my little sentient black pepper friend. And she said rub in the spice as well, so we'll do that. A couple Yukon gold potatoes, although you could use another one if you want. Start by peeling them up. And you could use a knife like she did, although very hard not to waste a lot of potato doing that, very hard. So unless you're some master chef who's good at using a knife on veggies, I would just stick to a peeler. And by the way, this is the only kind of peeler you're ever gonna need. Cheap Swiss peelers, I'll put a link to one in the description. Also, if you're doing this with kids or if you yourself are a child, a man child like me, stick a fork in the bottom of your potato like this, set her down, and it becomes really easy just to spin it and peel. It's actually faster than any other way. You get the bottom, then you just remove the fork and you can just peel that last little bit right there. Also, I'll put a link to a video down in the description on how to cook potato peels. They make an incredible snack. It's sad that they get thrown away so much, to be honest. Slice them in half, in half again. And from here, I'll cut them into eight pieces or so like this. As long as they're a similar size, it's gonna work out just fine. This looks good to me. Once they're done slicing, I would highly recommend you drop them straight into some cold water so they don't oxidize and change color while you're working with the rest of your ingredients. It's just a good practice. She used baby carrots, I'm just gonna use large carrots, doesn't really matter. Baby carrots are just cut from large carrots anyway. And this, they're true baby carrots, in which case it'll look like a mini carrot, if that makes sense. Start by peeling them up. I'll show you a way I really like to cut carrots. As you start from the top, about a 45 degree angle, roll it, same thing, roll it, same thing. It's just a nice shape. What are they called, oblique? Something like that. Of course, you can do it any way you want. I do like these though. One yellow onion, slice it in half, take off this thing and peel. From here, I'm just gonna do a medium dice. And by the way, when you get to the bottom of this little piece right here, you can always go like this and then just bum, bum, bum. Other side, a few slices, bum, 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 bum. Use it up. I got my pan on medium high heat. I'm adding olive oil and butter, which I'm a big fan of this combination, so I'm on board. And I'll go ahead and drop in my chicken thighs, skin side down. There we go, four or five minutes. I'm gonna flip my chicken. Got some decent color. 
Now, what I thought was gonna happen actually did happen. You can see that those herbs kind of burned on there a little bit. Not the end of the world, but honestly, I would just add them later in the recipe so that doesn't happen. Another three minutes on the other side, I'm gonna go ahead and remove all my chicken. Same pan on medium heat, drop in your onions. After just three minutes, we're gonna add our potatoes and carrots. Season it up just with salt. Remember a lot of people telling me that salt isn't seasoning. Salt seasoning, just so you know. I'll cook this down for eight minutes, stirring every two minutes. Those are the instructions. While that's cooking, I'm gonna chop up some garlic, just mince it up, and a little bit of Italian parsley here. I'm gonna try to just slice through it once. Maybe I'll do it a little more. My knife's pretty sharp. Next, we'll juice a couple lemons, or enough for two tablespoons worth of juice. At this point, it's time to build that weird sauce that I'm actually super excited to try. Because all the components are pantry items that I really love, I've just never thought to mix them all together. Let's see how it goes. Starting with honey. I've got the heat on the pan just a touch under medium. Around medium will be fine. Now we're adding in this sweet chili sauce. You can find this in the Asian section of most grocery stores. Pretty common thing these days. Wow. I gotta taste it now. It's gonna be sweet, but oh, it's just, it's just crying out for something salty. Which is the next ingredient? Soy sauce. Wow. Ooh, that's gonna be good. I know that's gonna be good. I'm trying it after each addition of ingredients to see how it changes. We're on the way, it's definitely better. It's still really sweet. Next ingredient is the lemon juice, and hopefully the sour aspect of that lemon will cut through that sweetness a little bit. The next ingredient is really throwing me through a loop, Dijon mustard. All right, we're gonna try it. Once I got that Dijon in, I can see I really need a whisk now. Let's give it one more final taste with the mustard. It's definitely not bad. Not sure exactly how I feel about it. We'll see when the whole dish is done. Let's add our garlic and parsley. And just thinking about it, I'm gonna let that garlic cook for at least two minutes. For me right now, all these flavors that I see in the pan before me really gel. It's gonna be interesting to see how it all comes together though. This dish is a very West meets East kind of dish. It's like Western vegetables with Eastern flavors and sauces, if that makes sense. With a little bit of a French man thrown in with that Dijon mustard. All right, here we go, chicken thighs. Going back in, get in there you. Try to really tuck them in a little bit. All these juices that came out of the chicken, gotta do it. Scrape them in, scrape them in. And look at this nice uh, bubbly sauce. Woo, all over. Oh yeah, oh, oh that does look good. Oh that does look good. Wow, wow, wow. Now I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a mix. Last step into the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 25, 30 minutes. And in her video at this point, she made a salad, which we're just gonna skip today. So there we are, 25 minutes. Okay, it looks delicious. Now let's finally serve this up and give it a proper review. I have two bowls in front of me because... Marcus, come on down. Let's give it a shot. Oh. Pleasantly surprised. Mm. The sauce was strong at first, but when it cooks up with the potatoes, the vegetables, the chicken, the chicken releases its juice into the sauce. It all kind of gels together at this point. Thigh is very tender too. Well, to start, I finished the entire bowl. Like I said, at first that sauce was strong, but everything together is actually really good and nicely balanced. One of the only things I would change is to cut down on the sweetness a little bit, just like the other chicken recipe we did. Some ideas would be to increase the soy sauce a little bit. Consider adding a touch of just white vinegar, I think would be really good. I think ginger would be awesome in here. Lemongrass would be awesome in here if you want to go down that road. If you want to spice it up, some chilies or some dried chili flakes would be really good. And the other note I have is I would just take away adding that dried oregano in the beginning for two reasons. One, it burns on the chicken, and two, you just don't taste it at all in the end. It just doesn't need to be here. Drum roll, please. Having said all that, I would give this a solid 8.9 out of 10. That is a really, really solid recipe, and I think anybody who recreates it is going to have a great experience. And I always encourage you to freestyle and have some fun and just make it your own. I hope you enjoyed watching today. Here are two more easy chicken recipes from my own channel. They're easy to pull off and I'm confident you're gonna love them just as much as I do I'll have links to the original creator from this video as well as the recipe down in the description I also put a bunch of my favorite equipment and products down there that I love to cook with and we do have merch Available now if you want to help support the channel until next time, you know, I love you in my